Alrighty, I think we are good to go. Hello everyone, good morning, or, or depending whenever you're watching this, good afternoon and good evening. My name is One Who Gets Bread, and for today's Pokemon-related content, I just wanted to do a video of this binder tour. This is one of my older binders of Pokemon cards. As you can see, I decorated it with different packs from, we have some things from the black and white era, and then there's some things from the sun and moon and XY areas. And so yeah, this is, this is one of my older binders of Pokemon cards. And I just wanted to make a quick like binder tour. There's a lot of holofoils and foils and whatnot in here still that I need to move and I just I thought it would be fun to just like go through them and explore and reminisce back on <laughs> which sets they came from and whatnot all right before we get started if you're new to the channel I want to give you a big warm welcome thank you for tuning in and let's get started let's pop this thing open all right so the first couple of um pages I actually already did earlier as you could see there's just a blank card sheets and then um, we get to the foils in the front of the binder which I've already started removing and now we just go to this third page and here's all the cards in that page these are all holofoil some of them might be um, promo cards this one's a pop promo card from gen 4 the diamond pearl era but other than that these are all like Holofoil cards and some deck exclusives like this Garchomp. I think that's a Cosmos Holofoil one. Um, yeah, let's go and sleeve some of these and we'll just continue talking about the cards as we go. I, I'll look up like the market value of some of the cards. If there's anything like interesting anyone sees, just holler and I'll, I'll give it a check. Alright, so yeah, I'm going to start sleeving these ones. I have my trusty sleeves. I'm gonna be a lot careful, a lot more careful when I'm doing this because um, some of the some of the cards are already damaged a little bit. Nothing that's heavily played, but like light played territory, and I don't want to make them worse. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna pop these ones out. This is a Dragon's Exalted. Um, Garchomp, and then there's a Japanese Hypno in the back. This is Dragon's Exalted, and this is a Cosmos Holo, I think that's what they're called. So you could see it's from the set 2012, so this was Black and White era. Funny thing about the Black and White set, Dragon's Exalted. Actually, I pulled a, a Giratina EX out of a pack when it first came out when I was like in grade school and I traded that Giratina EX to someone I forgot what card I traded it for but it was for like another EX I forgot what card specifically I traded it for but like now I'm in the process of getting another copy of the Dragon's Exalted Giratina EX as like um you know like just to remind myself the card and to regain that one I forgot where I got this Japanese Hypno. I don't collect the Japanese cards or the other languages because I don't find any packs with them being in the U.S. Smack dab of the U.S. as well and in the Midwest here. But um, I think this came from one of my friends who had some Japanese cards and it was just in his collection. All right, now moving on to the Swalot. This one I do remember buying from V-Stock, actually. They used to sell, like, really vintage singles. As you can see, this Swallow is from 2009. I bought it probably back in 2013 or, some, or so, like that. And they used to carry, like, the older cards, but then now they usually just carry um, Sword and Shield and beyond, so... There's Amphros. I forgot where I got this Amphros, but I'm guessing I also bought it at V-Stock. Because at the time, I got all my Pokemon cards either from PAX, or buying PAX, or from V-Stock. I didn't know about the local card store near me, nor did I know about Slackers. I knew about Slackers, but um, I always thought they didn't carry Pokemon cards. So there used to be a Slackers near my house, like probably a three-minute drive from it, but... 
it has since closed down, I think, for a while now. So there's the Ampharos, and there's a Swalot. Let me get one for the Swalot. Other interesting card that I remember out of the blue, I think that Rotom in the upper right, this one, I think that was from my neighbor. Because he used to collect Pokemon cards. I remember I asked like specifically for all his ghost type Pokemon because I liked ghost type Pokemon even when I started be when I started in the Pokemon franchise. I really liked the ghost type Pokemon. And so Rotom's of course a ghost type and so gave me that card. Uh what else here? I just remember opening a bunch of Furious Fist packs as well. That was a, that was a wacky set actually, in my opinion. Let's see what's behind. Oh, a Pyroar. So we have something from Flashfire and then something from Furious Fist. These are some of the earlier X and Y sets, and I remember I remember in Flashfire they had all those Charizard. My neighbor, Steve O, he's sometimes on my streams. Whenever we do like the Mario Kart streams or and whatnot, and sometimes the Pokemon battling, uh, he, his grandma, bought him the Mega Charizard X from Flashfire when it was still like let's say like forty dollars. I think that's how much she paid for it, according to him. And I haven't checked the price on it, but I think that was a pretty good deal that he was able to snag when he didn't need to go through packs and packs to find one. He just bought, so he just straight up bought one. I think that was a smart play. Very nice collection. Flash Fire. I think I have one of the Charizard from Flash Fire. I can't remember which one. I know I don't have Mega Charizard X or Y, but I have one of the Charizard EXs. And a Noivern. I need to probably pick up the pace some here as I have some I have some uh, cleaning and some other things to attend to other than this. Oh, look at that. The border on this Noivern has kind of a thicker border on one side, so if it was a little bit thicker, I guess you could count this as a miscut. I don't know. I don't know. I mean it's thinner and thicker on one side. I guess that counts as a miscut. Who knows? Alrighty. Gonna move these over here. Actually, I could put them at the edge of the desk too, but I don't want to make I don't want to make them fall. Funny story about that. So I was putting the cards in the sleeves like I am right now in this video, and I accidentally dropped this Gothitelle from I think it was Legendary Treasures. So it was a it was an older card. It was from maybe like. I don't know when Legendary Chargers came out, but it was from that set, I think. And so I accidentally dropped it, and how it fell from the table, the corner of the card like this, it landed on it like this. So I heard a sound like that when it dropped, and I was like, oh man, of all the different ways it could have fell, it chose to go like this in nicking the corner of the card. So I was able to smooth and smoothen it out by applying some pressure and it's it's good as new there's just a tiny indent but other than that um the card is it's as if that that didn't happen <laughs> Alrighty, now there's a shift tree i'm actually just gonna take all of them out it might be faster in one go Ooh, there's a clank clank team plasma this card still pops up every now and then whenever i check v stock or my local card store or slackers. I will still see a Clink Clang Team Plasma Holo. There's something very like appealing to Clink Clang and the line as a whole. Because I like how it's who made, like who invented the Pokemon. They literally are gears. And then so what's powering them? Like there's one of those Pokedex entries that it was saying um, they must generate energy by constantly spinning. So is it like a perpetual motion machine? I wonder. Just a very interesting Pokemon, uh, one of my favorites ever since it came out in black and white. I actually didn't start playing the game. The first thing a Pokemon was like watching it, an episode of the show for me, like episodes of the Kanto Indigo League show, and like not knowing anything about it, just like oh that was, I guess that was a little bit cool. And then um, I told this story before I think on stream where there's like that Pokedex book from Soul Heart Gold and Soul Silver that we bought at 
blockbuster when I was still like in first grade or kindergarten and I just keep I just kept reading it with my sister and we both got interest in Pokemon so but flash forward to a little bit after that when black and white came out I remember my aunt brought me to Toys R Us and I bought the Pokedex book for black and white so I had all the new ones and also a tin the Reshiram tin and one of the cards I pulled was a Kling Clang so I was pretty happy about that I always thought Kling Clang and then I also liked Kafa Grigus I thought the Reuniclus line was also cool as well as the Gothitelle and I just thought it was also interesting the Tornadus and the Thunderous as well when I was flipping through that book when I was younger all right I'm gonna just foil these I mean not foil them sleeve them there we go and a Metagross. Oh, there's also two of them up here. This is a, if I remember correctly, this is a Steam Siege Hydreigon. Very nice. And here's the Rotom. I might just do like two or three pages of this. This is going to be too long of a stream. I don't want to keep you guys waiting. All right, this Verizian, it's, it's from Noble Victories, but it has like that Cosmos Holo. This was probably... This was probably from one of those, like, three-pack blisters. I remember there was one that had the um, legendary... Are these called them legendary musketeers? Like, Cobalion, Terrakian, and Verizian? I think that's what they're called. But anyways, I remember seeing a set of them. There was, like, a three-pack blister or something at Target from that MJ Holding Company or whatever it's called, where it's, like, prepackaged, but it came with these three foils. One of them was the Verizian. I don't have the Terrakian or... Cobalion, so I must have bought this one actually from V Stock or something like that. Yeah. Hello, the Ultimate Sonic fan. Thank you for, so much for joining. And yeah, this one is probably going in a sleeve. I I might want to price check it later. I, I'm feeling something from that card. The foils from the black and white here are supposed to have these lines that are going across like here if I move it in the light you could see those horizontal lines going crazy but then this one I think it's a cosmos holo because of how the pattern on it it's just these random circles side dragon here's a metagross this metagross card I think it's a little bit interesting it's a cracked ice foil so it's probably from a theme deck but I don't know which theme deck it's from. <laughs> and it's also from 2010, so it's a 12-year-old card. Very interesting. It's like a museum artifact, you know? This is a this is a 10-year-old card. Or more it's a 12-year-old card, actually. We're in 2022, baby. Alright, let's sleeve him. Actually, Meta does Metagross have genders in the game? I think it's a gender unknown Pokemon. All right, here comes Verizian. No, oh, couldn't see the opening of the sleeve for that, for that second. Speaking about sleeves, I encourage anyone who's collecting Pokemon cards, baseball cards, and any of the sort, if you are able to, please consider sleeving some of your foil cards, and um, it'll just protect them in the long run. It's very important to protect to blah, blah, to protect the stuff that you collect so you don't damage them and they're protected from damage and the elements and then they'll they'll have a longer longevity and you could then go back later and reminisce on them you could say ah it was very smart of me keeping this thing in good condition and whatnot like that this one is a little bit um banged up there's like a big old scratch in the back so I'd just say this is probably heavy or moderate play I don't plan on selling any of these but I just I would just critique this one as a moderate or heavy played card because there's that there's that thing and there's also that little actually I could probably remove that if I'm careful enough all right we still have a lot of penny sleeves but it's diminishing we're running out of penny sleeves. I'll need to go to the I'll need to go to Manticore and buy some more. They're only a dollar for a pack of a hundred. If anyone's looking for them, they're great for like your foil 
Pokemon cards and Ultra Rares. If you can't buy the deck protectors, which are kind of a little bit expensive, or the top loaders, just at, I think the best option like economically would be just to get Penny Sleeves until you could save for some top loaders or the deck protectors. And also, for the binders that you're using for your collections, make sure for the more expensive cards, they have a D-ring binder. As you can see, this binder, the, the rings here, they have a D-shape as one of them is curved and the other one's straight down. This will, prevent, this will prevent the rings actually creasing the cards when you're closing it, and you don't want damage to your cards that way because it's irreversible. So for your more expensive cards or larger binders or sets, I do recommend a D-ring binder instead of a circle ring binder. You could find D-ring binders at Target. That's where I got this one a while ago. I got it at Target, and I think it's Avery brand. I think all of their binders are D-ring, so yeah. There's a shiftery from Flashfire, I think. I remember there's a shiftery card in uh, Next Destiny set is banned. Because if it's, I think it like makes the person like discard all their cards. So if you keep playing it, you could win the game without actually doing anything. So I think that's the reason why it got banned. All right. Uh, I don't know. Let's see this section. I'm trying to look for the cards there. I could like have a story about them, or I could talk about them for a little bit. Let me flip through here. Uh, I'll, I'll do this page because I could actually, I remember hunting for this Slurpuff. Okay, so when X and Y came out, I remember it was, oh shoot, how long ago was it? It was 2014. So I was finishing, yeah, I was still at, I was still in elementary school at the time. I was in fifth grade when the, the X and Y base set came out. And I remember I always traded with like the kids who were staying after for daycare and YMCA and all those clubs. And one of the kids I was trading with, he had all the foils from X and Y base set. And so I, I traded with him for an, both Aegis Slash, I traded for a Romatisse, and then I think I also traded for a Greninja, if I remember correctly. I traded one of my cards that I pulled from the set. I pulled early on, I think I pulled a Wyvoltal Full Art GX, or not GX, but EX. I pulled it from an Elite Trainer box I remember opening. One day we were going to this book fair and I decided it was around my birthday and I decided to open the Elite Trainer box on the way there and I pulled it and Wyvoltal EX and I think like when I traded with the kids at my elementary school now is still there in fifth grade I think I traded it away but I think I should have held on to it now for Slurpuff I don't know why but I've never heard that many people having this card. I don't know why so many people have Aromatisse, and I guess it's just a strange Pokemon because Aromatisse cards, last time I checked on TCG Player, their market value is at least 50 cents for the XY base set Aromatisse. And I guess it's just because it's a strange Pokemon, but I don't ever hear many people talking about, oh yeah, I have a Slurpuff, or I've pulled a Slurpuff. So yeah. Here's a Blissey from one of my, actually one of my favorite sets in kind of, one of my more forgotten sets, if you could say that. Um, the Dark Explorer set in black and white. I remember I was hyped for the set. It was around the time when I, again, was just new to the Unovan Pokemon. I was just getting into Pokemon at the time, and I saw Kafagrigus, and I was like, man, that's an epic-looking ghost-type Pokemon. I got all the Kafagrigus cards from, what's that set? Noble Victories. So I got, I remember I got the one that said Damagrigus and Perplex. Those were its attacks. And then in Dark Explorers, they actually had a Kafagrigus theme deck. I forgot what it was called. It was like Raiders and Shadows or something. I think Shadows was, oh wait, no. I think it was called Shadows. One of them, the other one, theme deck was a Zoroark theme deck and 
one of the theme decks is called Shadows, the other one was called Raiders. I guess the Kofagrigus one is called Raiders because it's like a like a, an artifact, an ancient artifact. So like think from Indiana Jones, like Raiders of the Lost Ark. I guess that's what they're going for. But I was just so hyped for the that set because of the Kofagrigus in it. I know there's another card in Dark Explorer set. I'm not going to talk about the EXs because, of course, those are going to be chase cards. But there's a Blaziken. I think that was the first Blaziken in the black and white era that aired in the set. And I found one on eBay. I, I haven't bought a, the Blaziken yet, but I've been looking for one. Recently, I think like three weeks ago, I saw a listing on eBay. It's going for like $9.99. I haven't even checked TCG player because I don't think anyone has it. It's such a such an uncommon card. Here's a Blissey from Dark Explorers. Right now I'm going to sleeve it. I'm gonna put it over here. Alright, so this Thunderous is from Emerging Powers, if I believe that's a symbol for Emerging Powers. There's a Tornadus. I don't know where the Tornadus is. I think I may have sleeved it already off camera. I know I have a Tornadus of this. I just never got the Landorus. There's a Landorus in Noble Victories. It would ha it had like the same art style, but except for white hexagons in the background. It was like red. It's like a sunset red color, and it was by the Five Band Graphics. Five Band Graphics. I remember looking at the 3D Pokemon art for the first time, and I was blown away. I would just try to like sketch out their artwork on like pieces of paper. Like I have, I need to find it and show it on stream one of these days. But I literally did like front and back renders of some of the Yenavan Pokemon because I thought it was so cool that you could do it and then Pokedex 3D. And I also had that on my 3DS. I was one of the original OG Red 3DS owners, so. I had Pokédex 3D on there, and then also seeing the 3D capabilities in 5-band graphics card art, I was like, oh, I want to draw in 3D. So I started, like, drawing on pieces of paper, like, renders front and back of Pokémon. <laughs> I really like 5-band graphics artwork. The earlier ones were, like, kind of just, here's the Pokémon in a 3D model. But then, of course, it was just back then it was the first time I saw, like, never before seen 3D artwork in Pokemon cards, if I remember. And to the scale, I know there's some, like, 3D art modelers in the older sets, but, like, 5-bend graphics, they are making a big deal about it. Alrighty, so I'll look for the Tornadus. I know I have a Tornadus, I just never got the Landorus. I think this is the premiere of Thunderous, too. I forgot. I've seen the Full Art Thunderous. There's a Sacred Rare Full Art Thunderous from this set, I think. I've seen it somewhere. I forgot what store. I think I should have bought it. <laughs> I've seen it once. It might have not been recent, but if it was recent, I think I should have picked it up and bought it. This is a Verizian from Ancient Origins. That was a cool set as well because of the Hoopa, the new form of Hoopa. And look at the foiling on this card, the holo foil pattern. It's kind of like everywhere on the card. I think this is an era where sometimes the foiling extends outwards. As you can see, there's like a line. I don't know if I could put it closer. There. Do you see it kind of changing at the bottom when it's not in the in the artwork box? I think that's pretty interesting. I think out of the what are these called? The legendary musketeers or something? Either Keldeo or Cobalion are the most useful, in my opinion. Verizian is just a times four weakness to fire, and I don't want to do that. Cobalion has some nice resistances, but it's weak to fighting it. So if you have another fighting Pokemon in a battle, it's going to just attack it. And, oh man, I did not notice this Typhlosion had a big old crease in it. Oh man, this is going to be like a lightly played or moderate. Moderately played, but it's from, what set is that? That's like the Mewtwo one, or they did Mewtwo X and Mewtwo Y. I think it's in X and Y, but oh, it has a big old dent in it. I don't know about this card. Oh well, anywho, I forgot what I was talking about other than that. Oh wow, why did I double sleeve this? There's just a double-sleeved card, or actually that's three cards in one. There's a random whooper. 
that was in between these two cards. Oh man, the whooper fell. I'm just gonna put the whooper on my desk. There we go. This is a cracked ice talon flame that's in really bad shape. This is probably gonna be heavily played, but I'm going to slave it anyways, just in case. This is a cracked ice holo one. Yeah, I don't like that. The tip of the. Yeah, that looks that that looks gnarly. I'm gonna make sure I mark that as like heavily played when I add it to my collection list on TCG. TCG player. This is a Plasma Blast Haxorus. I actually seen this card. I've actually seen this card recently, like in the past month. I was at Slackers and they had one in their binder for sale. I didn't pick it up though. Oh wait, no, it wasn't at Slackers. It was at um, my local card store. I didn't pick it up though because I knew I already had one. I wasn't sure if the back was messed up or not. There's the Haxorus. All right. Now moving on, I already talked about the Slurpuff. Let's see what's on the back. Ooh, a Raichu. This is an X and Y base set Raichu as well. Oh, there's like some... That is so odd. Like a big crease here as if it was folded over, but I don't see any other evidence of that. And there's like a bunch of pencil marks. Like someone got mad and then just like started dot, 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 dot. There's like so many of these pencil indents in it. This is probably lightly played. It's also a miscut, too. That's weird. The border on one side is thicker than the other. Alright, here's our slur puff. Let me just put, put it in a sleeve. Oh, there we go. Alrighty, now there's just a floor just. Now the floor just, I do remember actually trading for it. From that kid at when I was in elementary school. This one, I for sure bought this at V-Stock when they had their binder filled with a bunch of cool stuff from like different sets all the way back from EX and beyond. They had some good selection in their binder. They're selling them at crazy prices as well. I couldn't believe it. And this Bisharp is from Noble Victories, and I just love the art. It reminds me of like a kaiju film. Like you know, like a giant mech attacking a city. If you zoom in, let me just bring it up to the look. That Bisharp is as is taller as is as tall as one. The buildings are even taller than a skyscraper in the art. That is epic. So this is like a kaiju film in a in a Pokemon card. I love it. Where's the back? All right. There we are. Now this Infernape, I know for sure I bought this at V-Stock as well. <laughs> it has like this cool, like, again, the circular Cosmos holo print all over it, but this time it's also extending to the bottom. I don't know if this makes it more valuable or not, or it's just an error card, but yep, there's the Infernape. I do not, excuse me, I do not know what set this came from. I'm not very good with the Diamond and Pearl sets. Where's the back? It's like a tiny scratch in the front, an indent of a scratch, but I think it'll be fine as long as we sleeve it. All right, we're down to our last couple of penny sleeves, so I might need to end this video short. Let me find something else interesting. There's a clink. This is the clink clang card I was talking about earlier from the black and white tin I bought so many years ago. And there's the Reshiram promo from that box. There's a Kafagrigus. Again, Kafagrigus is one of my favorite Pokemon. Let me find something. And then the rest of the binder is basically like just the commons, uncommons, and rares from all the packs I've been buying and opening since I was in kindergarten. Or not kindergarten, but like third grade or so. There's some Delta species I've found. Let's keep just turning the pages here. There's an Umbreon from Dark Explorers, but it's not a foil, but it's still a pretty cool card.
This is a Meloetta promo. I forgot what promo this was for, but it's a pretty cool art. I think that's supposed to be like Silence, Kressel, and Team Rocket's Meowth from the show. It's pretty cool how they integrated them in the card art there. I really like it. There's one of the Kafagrigus cards I was talking about. Uh, this Drifloon was from my neighbor. My neighbor Jack gave me that Drifloon, I remember. I remember trying to hunt for Sylveon for such a long time when I first knew that there's a Sylveon card coming out. Let me just speed up here. I know there's some cards in the back that might be sleeved. There's an Axew from that Dragon Vault set, but it has some stuff on it. Oh, here's an interesting card. So this Magmortar from Dragon's Exalted in the original Japanese art, Magmortar is aiming his arm cannon blaster thingy. So he's like going like this, but he's going at the view at the person looking. So basically, it was aiming at the person who's holding up the card or looking at the card. So in the US versions, they obviously censored it to where it's like kind of loading its arm up for like a flamethrower attack or something like that. So yeah, this is if this was the Japanese version, that Magmortar would have already been taking aim right at us like that. But they censored it in the international versions. Let me see what else I can find as we go back. Oh yeah, there's a big night from McDonald's. When Black and White first came out, they did this thing with McDonald's where you had like the little subset of cards from there with the McDonald's symbol. There's a big night. I don't know if we have all of them. I might need to look for them. We might have all of those. I don't know how much that set would be now, but who knows? Sorry, there's a big yellow. Ah. All right, now there's some foils here, here that I actually want to put into sleeves, such as da 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 da. There's a Mewtwo cracked ice holo foil in here from XY Evolutions. It was a throwback set from 2016, where they took some of the base set cards and like redid them, and so yeah. There's a Mewtwo Cracked Ice Holofoil. I'm going to put it in a nice sleeve now. There we are. Other things back here. Um, that Articuno might need to be slaved for this Porygon Z. For sure. Actually, I might need more sleeves, but I don't have any right now. Yeah, and then there's this, this is a Zoroark Secret Rare from Emerging Powers, if I remember. Is that Emerging Powers symbol? I think it is. Or Next Destinies, it could be either. So, this was from my cousin in Canada. And so, yeah, he gave me that. We traded for some, I forgot what I traded him, though. But it's a little bit banged up, as you could see in the back and stuff. But I think it, stood, it should still be slaved. It's a little bit banged up in the back of the card as you could see let me just sleeve it so it's protected from any further damage that heavily and damaged card in the middle is from one of my other neighbors it's a tyranitar prime and then that's about the end of the binder it's just energies and energies and energies and energies and energies everywhere a bunch of energies actually Go look at all these energies that we have. We also have fairy energies in the back. There's the cracked... Is this the cracked ice holofoil of... Let me pull this one out quickly. I think it is. Is this a cracked ice foil? Yes, it is. So, this is the Xerneas cracked ice holofoil from X and Y base set. So, this is actually one of the first Xerneas cards ever made. And it's a deck exclusive, too, because you could tell it from the cracked ice holofoil design on it. I actually have the the Eviltal one. Let me go pull it up. I have it in the pile with me right here. This is a pile of the holofoils I sleeved off camera yesterday. 
me just go through them quickly. These are like, I checked the prices of these ones in my hand right now on TCG Player, and each card is worth at least four dollars. So I just made like a, I just made like a separate pile for those ones, and then everything here is like three dollars to like fifty cents. Let me find him that Y votes all. I might do a video talking about these cards. There's some like memorable ones in here as well. There's the Gothitelle card that I accidentally dropped in it and it ticked one of the sides of it, that corner right there. I was able to smoothen it out. Here's the Vival Tuttle. Let me just put them all back in a pile and I'll get my Xerneas. Put them side by side. They're fighting each other, but I think Xerneas wins each time because it has an advantage over Wyvolt's all. And it also has other moves other than Fairy that it could use to be super effective against it in the video games. If I think Wyvolt's all could learn like Sludge Bomb and stuff, so if it was like use Sludge Bomb, well, well I guess Xerneas got damaged there quite a bit. But I think Xerneas would win off the bat in a battle between like these two all right <laughs> gonna put those away now i'll make a video talking about some of the cards in here as well there's some stories to some of them all righty and this is the pile of cards again that they're like um four dollars and above in market value according to TCG player. We have an Umbreon from Plasma Freeze. He's a Team Plasma Pokemon, so shout out to all the Umbreon fans out there and all those Evolution fans. Shout out to all of you. There is an Umbreon. Alright, now BHM. Do you know what? Interestingly, Congress had that hearing, the US Congress had that hearing recently about the the um, unidentified aerial phenomena, so that was pretty interesting. I watched like a summary of it. Um, they had some pretty cool stuff in it, you know. But yeah, here's another extraterrestrial Pokemon in in a sense, the BHM. This is a Cosmos Holo from like one of those blister packs. White Kyurem, I forgot where this promo is from. Here's a Greninja from X and Y base set. Greninja won the fan favorite Pokemon, of course. Ash Greninja, and it was also voted, I think, as one of the most popular Pokemon ever in a recent year when Japan held a poll about it. There's a Venusaur from that, again, forgotten set, but still a treasured set. Um, Dark Explorers. This one's a Cosmos Holo. Greninja from the XY pre-release set thingy, where it was like, 30, 40 cards, and then it just had, like, everything from Kalos. It was like a Kalos sampler of Pokemon. There's a Latias from that Dragon Vault collection when they started doing Dragon types. There's an Embor. Actually, I have another Embor. I need to find it. There's a Lapras. I don't know why this Lapras is in there. I wasn't expecting it to be more than $4 worth in market. And then another Dark Explorers card in the Volcarona. All right, so those are the, those are some of the more harder to find cards that I pulled out of this binder. Alrighty, we have two more sleeves left, so who should they go to? Hmm, I'm voting on, I'm voting on the Metacham. I'm gonna pull the Metacham out. This card is a little bit damaged on the front, as you can see. There's a crease. So it might be best to put it in a sleeve before it gets even more damaged. There's that. And now, hmm, put that over there. And now we will do, I'm guessing the Porygon Z or the Articuno, but I only have one more sleeve left. Hmm. Or the Cofagrigus. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with my favorite, one of my favorite Pokemon here. And do the Cofagrigus in a sleeve. Let me just quickly get it out. Carefully get it out, I should say. Alright, let's take a look at this thing. There we go. 
I really love like how some of the attacks for the Kafa Grigas cards suggest that it's just going to start slapping the heck out of the opposing Pokemon. And it has four hands to do so, so it could like probably like, I'd imagine it like spins around in a tornado and just keeps slapping things around. <laughs> I can't wait when they add Kafa Grigas into Pokemon Unite. They should make it more like, I guess it would be more of a defender. But I like to see like, it's attacks when, you know, like the basic attacks when it's not one of those attacks you have a cooldown for. I just love to see it like a forehand slap attack, you know, that'd be crazy. I remember in the anime, Kafa Grigas will use its hands to cr like crawl on the, on the walls and stuff and on the floor. I thought that was always creepy. It would like orient itself like this and then its hands would go down and it just crawl towards like ash or whoever was in the episode i thought that was like interesting you know it, it's scary but it's a little interesting you know all right here's our cofagrigus and he's now in a sleeve all right the rest of them i think i'll have to sleeve once i get more penny sleeves i ran out of them i think i might have some up here let me see Nope, I don't think I do. Those are being used for other cards. Yeah, I ran out of penny sleeves. Alrighty, let's go and flip through this again. All the way to the front. There's another Cofagrius. There's a Cyndaquil and taking, that, taking a nap. Alrighty, we're almost there. Oh, there's another Typhlosion. Alrighty. So now let me close this. There we are. So that was a binder tour of my Pokemon card binder, one of the older binders I have. And yeah, so those were all the foils. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me on this adventure, going through a binder of Pokemon cards. I really appreciate all support, all the support and all the positivity. All right, guys, I'll see you all later. Thank you so much again for tuning into this video. I hope you have a wonderful day. Please get vaccinated, do something nice for someone, and I'll see you later. Have a good day, and I love you all. Take care. Thank you as well, the Ultimate Sonic Fan 2020, 2022. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right, guys, take care. I love you all, and have a good day.